I was thinking, you and I spend a lot of time in like the arts and humanities world. Are there mm-hmm. any science mm-hmm. topics that really get you going? My dad, I watched a lot of like science shows with my dad when I was a kid. So he was like, we Didn't watched everybody. all the stuff about. I, I guess we watched science shows with my dad as a kid. Yeah, yeah, we all watched yeah, science shows yeah. with your dad. <laughs> it was pretty good to watch that stuff with. Yeah. I was always into black holes. He got me into, you know, like quantum mechanics and physics and stuff like that. Ooh, and yeah. Parallel universes, all that stuff. You know, yeah. on the cusp of being not science and being just fantasy <laughs> science. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you? I, I like space stuff a lot, too. I like maybe the more science is that I like like space travel and the Apollo right. program and yeah. the current Artemis program. <gasps> Artemis. They just announced the astronauts. It's very they exciting. They did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, name the astronaut, rank them. Who's your favorite? <sighs> Why would One you to four. I, I, I didn't actually watch the announcement thing <gasps> yet, but I'm gonna, it's very exciting. I swear. You say you're a fan. <laughs> I know. Fake fan. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. <laughs> Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. Every week on Butter No Parsnips, your hosts Emily Moyers and Kyle Imperator take you on an adventure through the weird, wacky, wonderful, and sometimes even wicked world of one wayside word. Strange characters, delightful bits, and general joyousness abound. Join them as they test each other's etymological expertise. Uh, anyway, hi everybody! Welcome hey. to Butter No Parsnips. I am Kyle Imperator, and I'm Emily Moyers. And Kyle, you forgot to mention something very important: mm-hmm. that oh. this is the first episode of Butter No Parsnips that's going to be released on YouTube. <gasps> YouTube, that's oh. right, Emily. So if you're listening to this right now, you can check it out at YouTube.com/slash at Butter No Parsnips. Yes, there's an at in the URL. We a don't get it either. And an at. Yeah. Slash and an at. But come, you can see a real human, not animated faces. That's right. We prove that we exist. YouTube.com slash at butter no parsnips. That's where you can find us. Dot R U S. Uh, my, my outline has run out because it's not my episode, Emily. So no, it's all it's you now. Episode. I get to just gab yeah i've got a really good word kyle and it's a word that you might know but you might not know a lot about so i think we're we're still good all right your word this week Mm -hmm. kyle Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is quark q u a r k quark i okay yeah love it quark (laughs) yeah like quantum mechanics stuff, right? It is. <laughs> yeah. So I want to say a quark is like something, it's like a smaller than an atom atom kind of thing. Can you be more specific? Because it's not just smaller than an atom. So I'm remembering that there's like a, there's something that's got like six types and there's like, is it a quark? It's got like up, down, skippity. Uh, banana oh boy tremolo you know so much more than i thought <laughs> left, you would right Kyle. yeah <laughs> i remember that. skippity and tremolo are absolutely <laughs> in there skippity, tremolo. <laughs> um but it's got like six types and it's it's like is it the smallest substance is that what we what a quark is like yeah. the smallest known substance uh, it's it yeah it's one of the the smallest for sure yeah the i mean i'll just i mean play play the victory <gasps> music you got it for sure the definition, uh, in a simplified way, is quarks are what protons and neutrons are made up of. They are like the, the, the furthest down you could go in atoms. Tiny, tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. So for people who don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to get too, too deep into the science here. Because at the end of the day, this is a word podcast. And I actually want to talk more about where the word comes from. But I would be remiss if we didn't talk about what a quark is. And I was going to follow up with asking Kyle, what do you know about particle physics? But it sounds like you know a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of things, but I don't know if I know the connections or what any of it means. Like, I'm remembering it literally, and I'm, I'm just totally honest here. I remember all of this stuff because this is the stuff that my dad made me watch as a kid. <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't yeah. learn any of this you as an adult. The, the Nova about this. Yeah, that's <laughs> literally all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so <laughs> quarks fall under the umbrella of what are called elementary particles, which are particles that, as far as we know, cannot be broken down any further. They are the mm-hmm. most basic constituents of matter. There are other types of elementary particles. Another couple of examples, electrons are elementary. We don't think electrons oh. are like made of anything. They just gotcha. are. Because they're that small. can't be like broken down. The Higgs boson particle, more colloquially known as the God particle, um, mm. is an elementary particle. I'm just trying to connect it to things people might have heard. Yeah. Because there's I've a lot of that. words here that people will have heard flying yeah. around, but maybe didn't know how they all fit together. Mesh together. I think I've been called a Higgs boson once in my <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get out of here, you Higgs boson. <laughs> um, and as you said, Kyle, there are six types of quarks. They're called the 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 six flavors of quarks. Flavors. The That's word. what they are. Flavors. I want to. I'm trying to. It's all like directions up, down, de- like most Not of them all. are directions. Yeah. Two of them are just two of them are wacky weird. names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like up, down, in, out, uh, and then shake it uh, all about. <laughs> yeah, shake it all about. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, and then like bop it and twist it. I think were the last two. <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> the six flavors are up, down, strange, charm, top, and bottom. Top and which, bottom. The fact that there's up and down and top and bottom, bottom. is infuriating <laughs> it's just a big science prank is what it is <laughs> particularly because they weren't originally called that they originally i don't know who they are but physicists originally <laughs> wanted to call them truth and beauty which i, I don't know if it's that. better or worse because that's a lot that's like i mean yeah that's very like really out philosophical. there to call them truth and beauty <laughs> no i i like those better because i don't know there's something beautifully I don't know, metaphorical about it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And it's crazy because they didn't originally know that all six existed. When the theory first came around, they said, okay, there's three types. There's up, down, and strange. And then they were like, we're pretty sure there's a fourth one. We haven't detected it, but we're pretty sure a fourth (laughs) one exists. And then they did. And it was like, oh boy, I guess, I guess they were right because here's the one they said they were missing. And then they also found two more. We did they find it in a bowl of lucky charms? Like where did <laughs> yeah, these names come the from? <laughs> <laughs> it was the prize. Yeah. <laughs> well, a strange, it's called a strange quark just because it acts strange. Yeah, of course. It's just <laughs> they were like up wacky. and down we get. That third kind we don't understand, so we're literally just gonna call it a strange quark. <laughs> Science naming for you. <laughs> and then all six of those types have a corresponding anti quark. So there's an up anti-quark, oh. a down anti-quark, and so on and so on. They've all got villain archetypes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are like the same, but have the opposite uh, like properties as quarks. Yeah. So there's an anti-up and an anti-down, which are not just up and down, <laughs> not reversed. Just up and down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it's good. all very heady, and I barely understand it. <laughs> sure. In any case, uh, quarks are uh, joined together by what's called the strong force. And two or more quarks joined together are called hadrons. And that's a word people might have heard in the phrase, the large hadron collider. Yeah. Just that big machine in Switzerland where they throw protons at each other (laughs) and see what happens. It's like (laughs) proton baseball. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that is where they discovered the Higgs boson. I always assumed hadron was like some guy or... (laughs) A place. Yeah, no, it's it's what groups of quarks are called. And the most stable hadrons, and thus the ones that are easiest for wow. us to study, are protons and neutrons. So those are types of hadrons. That's crazy. That's cool. Yeah. So like protons and neutrons each have three what are called valence quarks, quarks. And those determine like the main properties of the hadron, like their mass and their electrical charge. And then they might also have any number of quark anti quark pairs flying around in there but my understanding is they don't affect it that much because the quark anti-quark like cancel each other out of course they do i mean like when you meet your other in an alternate universe and you touch them you just pop out (laughs) of existence you are now a neutral force in the (laughs) universe (laughs) yeah (laughs) now kyle yes you might be noticing or you might have noticed that Mm -hmm. the word is spelled q-u-a-r-k which would imply that it should be pronounced quarks 
rhyming with parks, yeah. but it is in fact pronounced quarks, rhyming with pork. I am sorry, what? <laughs> it's a subtle difference. No, I hear the difference. Yeah, and I don't know if I've been saying it right this whole time. I literally wrote myself a sticky note with the word quarks is that with what? an O to so remind funny. myself that that's how it should quark. be pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced quark, but it's spelled quark. So huh. this distinction in quark is because the pronunciation and the spelling have two different origins. How is that even possible? What is what is going on here? <laughs> People who are listening, I'm watching uh, like uh, electrical sparks go between the new neurons in Kyle's yeah, brain. There's a hadron collider in my mind right now. <laughs> it's trying to work it all out. <laughs> yeah. Trying to find the Higgs boson. <laughs> so the pronunciation quark was uh, created by a man named Murray Gell-Mann. Uh, who was one of the main people that came up with quark theory. And Gelman, like any good scientist, uh, he discovered a thing and then made up a funny little word to call it. He and just, said, I'm going to call it a quark, which is I a like, sound that I've just created. I like the cut of this guy's jib, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, can you go back? His name is Gelman? Is it a hyphenated? Murray, is that yes, his last name is Gelman hyphenated. Or is that like his superhero name? <laughs> <laughs> Murray Gellman. <laughs> Look up in the sky. It's a proton. Murray. It's a neutron. No, it's Murray Gellman. Oh, wait, I can't see him. Yeah, he's subatomic. Yeah, he's subatomic. <laughs> you can't even pick it up with a microscope. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get the Large Hadron Collider in there to even detect. <laughs> so Gellman theorized that there were these things that made up protons, and he called them quarks. But it was just a word he was saying, and he didn't have like a defined spelling for it. In later interviews, he was like, I, I, my, maybe I might have spelled it K-W-O-R-K, but I, what that wasn't, I wasn't firm on that. Work. I mean, yeah. that's, that's kind of yeah, how it's pronounced. More straightforward, but yeah. less quirky. And he found a quirky spelling that he liked and sort of adopted to the word when he was thumbing through the James Joyce novel Finnegan's Wake. Oh, yeah. Do you do you know anything about the James Joyce novel Finnegan's Wake, Kyle? I don't. Do you know anything about James Joyce in general? I, I know that he's Irish. It, you're correct. Can you name any other James Joyce works? The Dead. Is I think one? that's one of his. Yeah. Okay. There's Dubliners. Dubliners. That's one that I've read that's, a bit of that one. Sounds like a sitcom. That's a James Joyce novel? <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners might be familiar with James Joyce's arguably most famous work, Ulysses, which is known for being a very complicated book to read. It has a very like stream of consciousness structure to it. Oh. Lots of like puns and references baked into the writing, lots of made up words. And basically, James Joyce published that book and then I guess thought to himself, hmm, I can make it harder to read. <laughs> and that's when he wrote Finnegan's Wake. <laughs> love it. And love it's it. just that turned up to 12. <laughs> he said, I want a book that uh, students will open it up and read the first page and close it and want and, to and, leave yeah. the class that they're yeah, in. Yeah, <laughs> just immediately unsubmit themselves from the curriculum. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, just to try to explain it a little bit, there's not really like a consolidated plot to Finnegan's Wake that I can detail for you. There's like okay. lots of separate sort of interconnected stories. There are like recurring characters, but some things are happening in dreams and sometimes characters are representing other characters and some things are like references to mythology it's all very oh. like layered and surreal and wacky. Is is quirky? Is there it's at quirky. least a is there at least a person named Finnegan in it? There is. There's a there's a, a dead guy named Finnegan. Oh, I was gonna say, is the wake like a uh, like a funeral wake, or is it like yeah. him 
waking now they're just, you're talking about dreams yeah no it's a but like I, finnegan's not the main character i think it's like finnegan's wake is uh, like a setting like a place that they're at gotcha gotcha but the, it's about other people i don't 100 percent understand it there's a lot going That's on okay. with this book <laughs> just like just like uh string theory and quantum yeah, physics it's true I, i've really listen I apologize to the audience. I've given us a really rough episode here of stuff that's very hard to understand. But listen, as long as you know it enough to tell whatever Just, you're going to tell it to the audience, they're yeah. going to that's what they're going to know, you know? It's true. I am the yeah. ambassador to this impossible yeah. book right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it is impossible because on top of the plot being very hard to understand, the writing itself is bonkers. Oh, okay. <laughs> Literally, almost every word in the book is a portmanteau or completely made up or a reference to something. And in fact, a lot of words are all three of those things. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> and even when the words aren't made up, the sentences are not like sentences. <laughs> it's like very stream of consciousness, run on sentences, thoughts interrupting each other or looping back on themselves. It's crazy to read. <laughs> I had, I, this is not at all what I thought James Joyce was about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, James Joyce was like, I want to challenge the world. <laughs> he said, you try to glean meaning from this. If there's anyone listening right now who has read Finnegan's Wake and like gotten anything from it, uh, please let me know. I would yeah. love to, to hear from you. You can just take our place on this podcast. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Um, so Kyle, let, let's look at a couple quotes so you can okay. get a sense yeah, of please. what this is like. As I alluded to earlier, the mm. word quark first appeared in Finnegan's Wake, uh, okay. Q-U-A-R-K. Yeah. Um, it is in the opening lines of a poem that's in the book. This poem comes at the beginning of a new chapter. There is literally no context for it, so I'm not going to explain anything because there's nothing to explain. But the poem opens like this. Three quarks for Muster Mark, and sure he hasn't got much of a bark, and sure any he has, it's all beside the mark. Oh. How you feeling, Kyle? Oh, it's like someone throwing like sand in your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. What? Three quarks for Muster Mark. Sure he hasn't got much of a bark, and sure any he has, it's all beside the mark. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. So um, the the slight bit of context I can give you, the mark being referred to there is um a character in the story of Tristan and Isolde, which is a story from Celtic oh, mythology. Yeah, I know that. Um, that's one of a uh, Wagner opera. Oh, there we go. So there's that's a character in there that's through. King Mark of Cornwall, and he's referring to to that. Bark. And there's lots of references to Tristan and Isolde in the book. It's Tristan and Isolde, the what? myth is like littered throughout the book, but just oh in God. like meta text. It's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And looking at the word quark, there's lots of like references in that. All the like gibberish words in Finnegan's Wake have multiple meanings and references kind of all squished together mm -hmm. and uh, layered. So here is some of the references that people have dug up for quark. Quark in German means cheese curds or can also mean like a bit of rubbish or a trifle. It's also an archaic onomatopoeia for like croak or squawk, like that kind of a noise. Oh. Could be quark. A quark. Yeah. Murray Gell-Mann thought maybe it could also be three quarts for Mr. Mark because there are a lot of references to drinking in the book. Sure, um, sure, sure. And so but, that was his just... justification for pronouncing it quark because it's like Quart. quarts. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. But like none of that is made clear in the book. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you wouldn't know is, that unless you were James Joyce. <laughs> years of scholars trying yeah. to work it all out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now Kyle and people yeah. at home, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, Emily, based on the three lines of text that you just read, this does not seem that bad. It's a little silly, but it's yeah. a poem. Poems are allowed to be silly. Yeah. It's a little like Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. that too. It's a little Susian. Yeah. But let me, let me, you haven't yet gotten the full bend of it. Buckle up, because oh I'm going to oh now gosh. read a longer quote. Okay, all <laughs> and right. This is, this is from just after that poem, where okay. I, supposedly the narrative would pick up here. This is the bit that you're supposed to get. <laughs> supposedly, sure. <laughs> this is at the beginning of a chapter. This is coming right off a poem with no context. Gotcha. 
overhoved shrill glee screaming. That song sang sea swans, the winging ones. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just re- I'm reacting to Kyle's face. <laughs> Seahawk, seagull, curlew, and plover, kestrel, and capricalzi, all the birds of the sea, they trolled out right bold when they smacked the big cuss of Trustin with a sold. And there they were too when it was dark, whilst the wildcaps was circling, as slow their ship, the winds aslight, upborne the faints, the war doors moved by courtesy of Mr. Dobolo, down bellow Kemper Sally, listening in as hard as they could, in Doubledorp, the donker, by the turny old of the waterfalls, with their voxens, and they coming in so had a jockey only a quarter buck a skull for the last axe to the solons and the sycamores and the wild geese and the gannets and the migratories and the missile thrushes and the auspices and all the birds of the rockby sucker associational sea all four of them all sighing and sobbing and listening michael a hoikling emily literally the whole book is like that <laughs> Michael Heikling. <laughs> that is the only response to have to that. <laughs> that I mean, clearly. And I that mean, just for the people listening, Michael Heikling is its own exclamation. Yeah. There was like a sentence that ended, and then Michael M O Y K L E a Heikling A H O Y K L I N G exclamation point. Yeah. Michael and, Hoikley. And prior to that, what Emily had just said to us was only about four sentences. <laughs> Truly. Most of it was just one long run on sentence. Yes. Naming and one birds. long run on word. Rockby sucker associational. Yeah, I'm very proud of you for that. That was Thank incredible. you. I worked on it. <laughs> I mean, um, it shows. But Kyle, if you're proud of that word. Get ready to be really oh proud of There's me. more. Oh my god. <laughs> There's one more thing I want to talk about okay. with this book. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thunder words are a thing. Thunder words? Thunder words are... Oh, what is the best way to explain this? Because they're very weird. So in Finnegan's Wake, there uh-huh. are 10 100 letter words which are scattered throughout the book. Like prizes to find? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like obstacles to overcome. <laughs> <laughs> like it, like the book itself is a trial for the reader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <truly. laughs> it's tough to understand why. Because if you're just reading the book and like taking everything at face value, these words mm-hmm. have no context, no meaning. They're usually either in parentheses or basically their own sentence. They're just like, here's a big word. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but if you dig into like the the scholarly work that has been done on this book and you know decoding all this nonsense there there are like references and etymologies to these words and there is significance that kind of hints at this like larger meta text of the book okay um, yeah but that that is more than I can understand or explain sure, within the sure. time limit that we yeah. have. <laughs> uh, yeah, or the time limits of life, <laughs> <Truly>. perhaps. <laughs> but basically, each thunder word is a series of words strung together sure. and all squished into one. A couple of them are a series of English words that form like sort of a sentence, mm-hmm. but like sentences like the ones I just read yeah, 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 a yeah. little gibberishy. <laughs> But most of the Thunder Words are a series of made-up words derived from foreign language words. Yeah, I was going to say it sounds like that's like how like Germans make up new words is by putting words together. Sure. Yes. Yeah. But this but is like a hundred letters long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to read the first Thunder Word that appears on the book. It appears on mm-hmm. the first page. And near as I can tell, it's meant to be an onomatopoeia for the sound of thunder. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to show Kyle this word first and then I'm uh-huh. going to read it so that he can be really impressed. Okay. And I want everyone to know that I've practiced reading this <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. So if it's good, clap for her. That's right. Cuz here's the word that I'm about to read, Kyle. Baba badal harakta kamida ron kon bron tonaron twan thun trovar hunan skon tuhuhuhur denen thernak. <laughs> that Incredible. is one word, listeners at home. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 12 out of 10. Hoikling, Emily. <laughs> you deserve a big Hoikling <laughs> from every everyone, all the listeners. That's right. It was beautiful. It was gracious. <laughs> it was grateful. Yeah. It was 
graceful. It's the word I was looking for. <laughs> so you're doing it. You're pulling the yeah, James Joyce, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> um, yeah. So like you can break that word down and like find the derivation. So like Baba Badal, it's thought that that is a reference to the Tower of Babel. Garakta, that derives from the Hindi and Arabic words for thunder. And all the rest of the parts of this word derive from foreign language words for thunder. Kaminaron Khan comes from Kaminari, which is the Japanese word for thunder, and so on and so forth. So th- this is the first thunder this word is the, in the first book? of 10 thunder words and that's why they call them thunder words is because of yes. this one and the second gotcha. one is also all foreign language words for thunder there's another one he's that's th- all words for clap but they're all crazy and and yeah. like truly you gotta insane. you gotta spend time if you want to be able to pronounce these words because yeah. <laughs> yeah, the you- one i did is the easiest one i tried looking yeah. at another and i was like there's no way <laughs> you couldn't make this episode that word because it wouldn't have fit no on <laughs> any of our graphics it's so long <laughs> it would have wrapped around people's phones <laughs> yeah but yeah those those are the thunder words of finnegan's wake baba badal harakta kamina ron con bron tonaron twan thun trovar hunan skan tuhuhu or den and thurnuk i mean now you're just rubbing it in emily i know i practiced it a lot i'm gonna say it as many times as i can before it falls out of my brain sometime in the next three days absolutely Emily, you're like um, w- that newscaster that has to do the weather for that the longest town in the oh, world. Oh yeah, in, in Wales. Like, uh, yeah, in Wales. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go now. I feel prepped. Now I'm gonna yeah. go there and and just walk around saying long words. But Kyle, speaking of saying words, mm-hmm. do you think you can use quark in a sentence? I think we've reached that point in the day. Oh boy. Uh, it sounds like you can because you seemed pretty well versed right from the get go. I, yeah, I think I can. In the 1990s, my grandmother wrote a sci fi novel about black holes and quarks. Is that a true fact? It is. Wow. She never, yeah, she, I, she never finished it. <laughs> because um she went to a publisher and they were like this is just the plot of a movie and she was like no and it's then not. they offered her a movie deal <laughs> yeah no they said it's a plot of an existing oh. movie <laughs> did she did she write and get published a book? My, my grandmother did self-publish one of her books wow so it's on there on kindle for 99 cents <laughs> i mean amazing everybody go yeah. check that out yeah. um it's it's a long book <laughs> But, you know, if they made it through this episode, I think they can handle it. (laughs) I think they can handle it. Yeah. Great sentence, Kyle. Thank you. Great word, Emily. Love Quark. Thanks. I I bit off a lot with this episode, but we've made it to the finish line. And now there's only one thing left to do, Kyle. (gasps) Ritual sacrifice. No, a game. Oh. So, Kyle, your game today is called uh-huh. Nonsense James Joyce Edition. <gasps> I yeah. love recurring games! <laughs> <laughs> so, Kyle, a little while ago, we talked about nonce words, which are words that were created sort of spur of the moment. Yeah, um, for often- like a... For like like one use words, like yeah, singular like use words. For a yeah, specific yeah, yeah. occasion, um, yeah. a lot of times they're coined in a book or another piece of writing. And right. I nearly included the word quark in the episode where we talked about nonce words oh. uh, because it is an example of one. It was a word that James Joyce made up for the nonce. And in fact, James Joyce came up with nonce words all the time. Finnegan's Wake and Uh, Ulysses and a lot of his writings are just littered with words he made up. (laughs) Mostly, it seems. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, more made up words than real ones. (laughs) Yeah, like people and water. His books were (laughs) 70% made up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, Kyle, for this game, I've got three James Joyce nonce words, and I want you to just try and tell me what they mean. I'm sure I know exactly exactly what they are. <laughs> I mean, I think you can probably guess this first one. Your first nonce word is peluthered. P E L O O T H E R E D. Peluthered. Peluthered. Um peluthered. So <laughs> I mean, it sounds like what a Dutchman how a Dutchman might describe his boots. They're peluthered. <laughs> They're peluthered. <laughs> my, my peluthered boots. 
<laughs> no, but think about a lot of adjectives that are just something ed. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like something that is made of polluth. <laughs> no, I, I, what if I was to say, oh, that guy's polluthered. Oh, drunk? Yeah, you got it. Soused? <laughs> yeah, polluthered uh, is a word from Dubliners that means very drunk, probably derived from an existing British slang word, bluttered, which also meant drunk. Oh, okay. Next word, ubicity. U-B-I-C-I-T-Y. Well, that's the state of being ubis. <laughs> you got it. State of being one with one and two. Yeah? Uh, it's the state of two <laughs> being union. Two, two, the state of two in union. That's what I'm going to wow. Siamese twins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fun. Um, <laughs> Wrong. But no, obesity is just the place where a person is. It is derived from the Latin word ubi, which just meant where. Sure. Yeah, Someone's obesity right. is just their location. Yeah. And I mean, that, that actually kind of like works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a good one. I I, yeah. I think that one's worth using. This last word is definitely worth using. Scribbledy hobble. Scribbledy hobble. S-C-R-I-B-B-L-E-D-E-H-O-B-B-L-E. Scribbledy hobble. I'm pr- nearly 90% sure that scribbledy hobble <laughs> is something in the language of doodle bob on spongebob <laughs> i'm pretty sure he says like hoibledy hobble or at some point <laughs> i mean it would make sense if he said hobbledy hoy because that is that is what he says that is a no, real british colloquial word that is likely the derivation for scribbledy hobble scribbledy hobble i don't yeah. know what any of that means though is it mean like is it mean is it mean like uh <laughs> i don't know <laughs> banana hands <laughs> got a scribbledy hobble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, scribbledy hobble uh, is a word in Finnegan's Wake that's used to refer to uh, school children working in their lesson books. That just they're putting down scribbledy hobble. Just them working is their scribbledy hobble. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And it is uh, likely derived from the British word hobbledy hoy, which meant a young boy. A young boy is a hobbledy hoy. Um, is a hobbledy hoy. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Why? Um, For who? Uh, is it like, I mean, is it, uh, what's it, uh, Cockney slang? Like it rhyming rhymes? slang? It, yeah, it rhyming might be. Slang. Who knows? No. There's so many weird British slang words, you guys. Really one of these days, we got to do a whole episode about Victorian yeah. slang. <laughs> yeah, but we got to get someone from Victorian England on. Yeah. First-hand source for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting fact about that last word. Um, it first appeared in a notebook that Joyce was keeping while working on Finnegan's Wake. And that notebook is now often referred to as the Scribbledy Hobble. The Scribbledy Hobble, like his, like the Bible of James yeah, Joyce. The Bible of James Joyce, <laughs> the Scribbledy Hobble. Um, but no, Emily, thank you for all of the uh, Scribbledy Hobble that yes. you presented us in this episode. <laughs> what a quirky word you've had with quark. A quirky, 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 quacky word. Um yeah, quacky is it just doesn't sound good, so we're not going to say that. <laughs> no, let's um, not say it. Let's say something else, Kyle. <laughs> Emily's so good to me, guys. She's so good. She really helps me through these episodes because yeah, I'm just like Kyle always forgets to I close it next? out at the end. <laughs> Um, hey guys, remember that you can find Butter No Parsnips on social media, on social meds, on Facebook, on Instagram at Butter No Parsnips Podcast. Today's episode you can also specially find on YouTube, uh, which is youtube.com slash at butter no parsnips get the slash and the at in there if you like today's episode consider giving us a five star rating or review wherever you heard us or a like if it's on youtube and if you really like today's episode consider donating to our patreon at patreon.com slash butter no parsnips donating five dollars or more earns you a shout out either on social media or right here on the podcast thanks so much to all of you you help us make what we make and with that, I've been Emily Moyers. <laughs> and I've been Kyle Imperator. And this has been Butter No Parsnips. Perfect. Up parsnip, down parsnip. Strange parsnip. Charm, Charm parsnip. parsnip. <laughs>